There you go. You seeing journalism bake stick? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, journalism basic, one image. Pandemic forces iconic businesses to shut down with uncertainty of reopening. Yeah, the, <clears throat> you know, this is a lovely image to use to tell the story about uh, how the virus is affecting us all. Um, it's a uh, good story, um, so it could show up anywhere, good, good title. Um, I like the uh, framing you did with the trees. I wonder if you overdid it on the tops. I mean, the framing is really thin on the sides and really very thick on the top. So I wonder if um, you could look at that, and maybe think about whether it needs so much uh, for, on the top. Uh, I also wonder if you consider, I think this is a lovely image and I think it might do well in pictorial as well, although you may already have submitted it in pictorial. So it's uh, it's very well done. Next. Journalism Intermediate, two images. A Santa Rosa resident, formerly a victim of the 2017 Tubbs fire, watches the Wall Bridge fire grow in size on October 17th, 2020. Mm. I like how much space you've allocated to the smoke. Um, I think it really gives us the feeling of foreboding that this this implies to you and to the former victim. I mean, this is the second time he's going through this. And so upon, uh, showing all that smoke really reinforces the story that you're telling. Um, I think it's a good story. Uh, I think that you really uh, get a sense from the tenseness in his shoulders of how this is impacting him. Uh, unfortunately, I can't think of any way to improve this image. Uh, I think it's very well done. Thank you. Next. Workers curing and dying animal hides. Fez Henry, Morocco. Um, good story, telling us where they are and what they're doing. Um, I've seen a lot of these in travel, but this, but never so close up. Uh, most people don't give you uh, they give you the whole tannery rather than just a few people. So I think that focusing in on just a few people was was good. Um, I just to make the story a little better, you know, what is this step in the in the per in the process of curing and dying this the uh, the hides might be might be a little bit better, more more interesting to the story. Tell us what stage this is because it's a multi stage process. Um, but I like that you dropped in on, on everyone. Um, the gentleman in the lower right, you know, I wish I could see a little bit more of him. It's a strange crop of his shoulder and his hand there. Um, so that, that's, that's bothering that his hand starts to stick out. So if we could have seen just a little bit more of him, I would have appreciated it. Next. Journalism advanced. Two images. Bamboo rafts, Myanmar, one of three. A common sight on the Iridati are bamboo rafts that are assembled upstream and floated to downstream ports where they are taken apart and sold for construction scaffolding. The rafts tow small boats with outboard motors that provide steerage when needed. The crew often consists of a family, sleeping, cooking, and eating in shelters made from bamboo and plastic tarps. So I like this because you've told me a lot about what's going on here. Um, I really like the, the last piece told me a lot that it's, it's not just the males of the family doing it, it's the whole family that's involved in this process of, you know, of taking the bamboo down the, down the river to where it's then split apart and sold. Uh, so it's a really good uh, interest story. It, it, it might even be it might even be a good travel story because uh, it's not something you you would see here. It's something you you definitely uh, is unique to that area. I think uh, so. It was well thought out, and I think uh, most of your images are are pretty good. They give us a good sense for the the size of this river and the size of these rafts as they're floating down. Next. Russian River, one of three. A Sonoma County Water Agency opening the mouth of the Russian River. 
A sandbar blocks the flow of water to the ocean due to heavy surf and low water flows in the river. After clearing debris from the river side of the bar, a trench is dug on the ocean side. Waves crash over a jetty in the background. Final scoops of sand lets the water flow to the sea, allowing fish to migrate and alleviate flooding in the town of Jenner. So I think this is a, a you know this is a really important uh, interest uh, immediate interest story. It's a timely story, uh, especially now I think with the the flooding that we're seeing. Uh, clearing this out, I think you've done it done it very well. Uh, not only does the crane here give us a sense of size, but the human over on the left gives us a sense of size of the action that the crane has to do to clear this sandbar and the action of the force of the waves coming in, which is sort of surprising that it doesn't clear the sandbar itself. Um, you know, I, um, this one, this one, this image really, really hits it where, they, where they've opened the sandbar and you can see the, the water rushing in. This really gives a, a full sense of, of the story even more so than the other two. I like that you've closed in on just the crane and just the water here. Uh, so this one really, this one is really moving and um, it's possible that this could be a story in and of itself. Next. Journalism Masters, four images. Tree climber, one of four. Safety is paramount when climbing a tree. Two things are critical. The climbing spikes that are attached to steel frames and strapped to the climber's legs. And the other is the ropes with a harness and rings. Without these, a tree climber would not be able to do his job safely. Okay, so it's a good story informing me of what's happening. Um, I think you used uh, four images where three would do, um, possibly even two would do. Um, it's good that you showed us uh, you know, the um, leggings, the, the tree spikes, I think you called them, that he scraps on this, this shot. Um, we get a good close up of what those are and sort of how they're working. Um, and that you told us the other important thing is the, the ropes and loops and harnesses. Um, this cut is a little strange. I mean, uh, but it does show us, it does show us how the harnesses are holding, the ropes are holding him in place. So I think it is a good, good image. Um, this one or the first one, I think, is is a little, a little bit much. I think you could do this with with the last three images and skip the first one. Thank you. Next. This artist is working with a design of his own making at the Santa Rosa Tattoo and Blues Festival. This particular tattoo has cultural significance for the artist and the person he is working on. So this is a really interesting, uh, intimate shot that you've given us here of the artist and the and his patron. Um, I wish we knew a little bit more about what the cultural significance was, uh, but I'm not sure that that's really absolutely necessary uh, for this. It does look like you've done a little vignetting around the edges to draw us in closer to the to his face and to the hands of the uh, tattoo artist. So I think this is well yeah. done, a very intimate uh, portrait, but I think that if yeah. you were doing a story on the festival, this would this would play well with it. It's a house, 846. Thank you. On Next. Biden, one of four. Seattle's Capitol Hill area was an impromptu site of celebration for the victory of Joe Biden. I and yeah, Kamala Harris and the defeat of that. Donald Trump. Celebrants sporting signs and flags cheered oh, and honked. I can text it to you. Yeah, I, I'm I'm in a meeting, so I have to I have to get going. And you're also on the air. Okay, I'll text it to you. <laughs> okay, bye. Calm but exuberant crowds filled the same streets, which had been occupied by BLM protesters and what was known as Chaz and Chop only months before. The violence and angry chants of summer were replaced with cheering and the sounds of popping champagne corks. Really great pictures of a current event. Uh, you really captured things. Um, 
this first image is different from the other three. Um, the other three, you talk about the celebration of the people that they're celebrating their their uh, inauguration. This one is more a, a denigrating, and I wonder if it doesn't play with the story of celebrating that you're trying to tell. So, you know, I would say lose this one. Um, the story is really good. The other three images really support this celebrance story that you're trying to tell. And I think that these three images, you know, exuberant crowds, celebrant exuberant crowds, the last three images support your story a lot better. They're much better images. Great capture here of the, uh, you know, the bottle exploding just in time. Really good timing for, for doing that. So I think this is well captured here. Uh, just lose the first image. Thank you. Next. Drawing the angry bull, drawing away the angry bull while the fallen rider scrambles to safety. Cinco de Mayo celebration, Calistoga. Um, a really good story. I really feel like I'm, I'm there in this celebration. Um, so it's a, it's a really nice story. Uh, it's a really tough um, story to tell. These bulls move so quickly, you know, getting them in really sharp focus is, you know, near impossible unless you're using top of the line, high end equipment. Uh, it's funny, the, the, you know, they're not clowns. I wouldn't know what you call them in this case, but the men drawing the bull off are really in sharp focus, uh, more so than the bull, unfortunately, because I think the bull is really interesting. I love, like his eyes and I'm sure he's got a really fierce expression if we could, we could capture it more clearly. Um, but I get the feeling from the crowd of the energy of all of this from the bull. So it's a really good story uh, and a really nice picture. Thank you, next. Monochrome basic, three images. Wait for me. I like this. Um, it's a little shallow depth of field, but I really see the sharpness in the wings. Uh, I'm sure you did this. Uh, I'm guessing that you did this in monochrome because the sky wasn't really cooperating with you. Uh, but I love the I love the sharpness, the clearness in his wings. The problem is that it falls off in his face and his eyes. Um, and if you really want um, the whole bird, would be nice to have the whole bird uh, as sharp as the wings are. Thank you. Next. Big trees. Um, great choice to go to monochrome so that we feel the texture of this tree. Um, there's probably, there's a lot of interest there, a lot of fine things going on there. And I'm sure that you could look at this and look for patterns forever. Um, Cause you're just looking at patterns in here. You look for, for something that looks like a face or something familiar. Um, I wish that the tree had more separation from its background. You know, the, the whole background, the, the leaves and all on the right, just beyond the tree, just seem to be part of the tree rather than falling off and being separated from it. Um, you know, and the only, you know, the ways to do that would be to um, either uh, probably make, make use a blur tool is the only thing that I could think. I don't think that changing the darkness or lightness would really help that much because the tree has such a range of, of light and dark that that changing the light and darkness of this background wouldn't help the separation. Uh, but maybe using a blur tool would help the separation because there's a lot of lovely detail on that tree that I want to focus on just the tree and not be distracted. Next. Rock Glacier before Kawea Peaks. Really interesting. Um, you have a you know, foreground, a midground, and a background. I really was caught up when I looked at this of the different stages of the rock. I mean, you have the, the big rock mountains in the background, the smaller rocks on the hill, and then these large rocks, large stones here in the foreground. And I you know, was looking at this and wondering how you know, it got from one side to the other and had this body of water been separating them for how many years so that the stones on this side um, you know, we're still very large and the stones on the far side were being ground down. Uh, so uh, it kept my interest. Uh, it kept looking at this uh, because of that uh, and the, how the big 
mountain got ground down into these smaller rocks. So I think this is well done to keep my interest like that. Thank you, next. Monochrome intermediate, six images. Fanciful portrait. Really interesting. And I forgot for a second, I thought when I looked at this that I was in creative. Uh, very well done, very creative. I like the, you know, part of me likes this, um, these lights that curve around the face because it just, it sort of keeps you from drifting off to the top or to the right. Um, but I just wonder if, uh, and look at it this and see if the lights drag you to the bottom because the lights get more and bigger and brighter as you get to the bottom. And I'm just wondering if that's, you know, dragging your face, dragging your eyes away from his face or her face. Um, so it's, it's a wonderful idea, lovely execution. Uh, I just wonder about if the lights are dragging my eyes away. Thank you, next. Common gray moth. Um, when I first saw this, I thought the moth was translucent. Uh, it looks like the patterns on his wings, all the dots seem to, uh, this looked like you're looking through and still seeing the white and black from whatever surface the moth is on. Uh, so that was, that really interested me. And I spent a lot of time looking at that to, to determine if that was the fact. Uh, so I got caught up in that. I just wish that the, the center of the moth, its head and all wasn't quite so dark um, that we hadn't lost so much detail there, but I was fascinated by um, the moth on this surface and the pattern on its on its on its wings and on the surface and, and that kept me interested. Thank you. Next. Nesting Magellanic penguin, Phenicus Magellanicus, which is a near threatened species, Valdez Peninsula Nature Reserve, Patagonia, Argentina. Okay, a really good uh, nature uh, story title. Um, so uh, Bonus points for that, I guess. Uh, I like that everything is really sharp here. We can really see his face, his wings, and we can see the egg. Um, I wish there was a way to to make that egg more visible. It's really, um, it's really nice, and, and, and I think this is an unusual image to get down because it uh, there's something next to the egg. I don't know what it is. Um, you know. Some parts of me thought it was a, a second egg, but I think that would be a very unusual for, for uh, penguins to have a second egg. Um, I wish that you could uh, maybe burn down the grass, the leaves on the left side. Um, that's a little distracting, uh, pulling me away from his fa its face um, because it is such an interesting face that you've captured here. Um, and this yeah, I think that that's about all I should say about that. Just a little bit more separation from the leaves on the left. Thank you, next. Explosion. Thank you for putting the person in there. Um, really gives us, gives me a sense of size and how high up these waves are crashing and, and exploding to it. Um, and I really feel uh, a difference between the water and the uh, grass. And I think that the ground, I think that if this had been in color, uh, perhaps the ground would have distracted me and, and taken away my attention from the water, which is where you wanted me to look. Uh, I don't think that, you know, I don't want to cut down anything. I like it all. I like the, diff I like the distance that you provided us to the left and to the right. I think that shows the uh, how far in this water came to, to produce this explosion. I like that the explosion is just a little off center. It adds interest to the image. Uh, it adds interest to the whole uh, picture, to the, to the water. Uh, so I think that you, you captured this well and, and set it well. Thank you, next. She comes bearing water. You know, my, my personal personal preference is um, you're, you're sending me a picture of someone else's work. What did you do to make this your work? 
Um, you know, did you, uh, cause I don't think that at this point in time, this statue is in color. Maybe when it was first made, it was in color. Um, maybe uh, that isn't just wear marks on the, on the stone. Maybe that's uh, moss or something growing. So it was in color. It, if it was in color, we'd see uh, colored moss. And maybe that's why you went to black and white. So it all looks stone. Uh, I'm trying to give you the benefit of the doubt for why, uh, why I should be interested in someone else's artwork. Uh, so that's what I'm grabbing onto is that you went, it, you went into black and white. So we would see that it was all stone um, and thus making this uh, your, your piece of artwork. And uh, it's nice. Uh, I don't know if it, if it holds my interest. What am I going to look, look at for you know, half an hour? I'm not going to see patterns of faces anywhere because I'm going to be distracted by her face. I'm going to want to go back to look at her face. So I'm not going to be looking for patterns in the, in the wear of the statue. So thank you. Next. Anemone. What I'm, what I was most interested in is the angle at which you took this. It looks like uh, a different angle than most, than usually what you see for an anemone. Uh, so that really intrigued me. And then you went for what looks like a high key uh, shot. So um, the, the separate, the contrast between the, the center and the uh, petals for lack of a better word is, is, uh, is really there. And we really are focused in on this. You've got a nice shallow depth of field. So what's right in the center is what's uh, you know, in perfect focus and drawing our attention in. Um, we, we move to the sides and all we see is white with just a little detail. So our eyes are drawn back to the center. Um, in this case, since everything is so white, we're not being uh, drawn away from the image by a big white spot. Since everything is so white, we keep just moving around and falling back into the center. So it's one, it's uh, by going high key, you you force us back into the center and we're not distracted by highlights. So um, well thinking to do that. Thank you, next. Monochrome advance, six images. Beauty and the Beast. You know, when I looked at this and saw the, the bug, I thought it was jewel encrusted. You know, uh, some, they used to make jewelry with, with beetles and bugs and all. And that's what I saw when I first saw this. So I was really intrigued by it. Um, he went down and focused and just the head and the first part of his thorax is in, is in crystal sharpness, um, the antenna, you know, uh, fade off quickly. I think that if you wanted to, there are two, two things you can, two ways to think of this. I think it's really interesting because of the, the you call the bug the beast, and I'm not sure that it is. I think it's pretty beautiful myself. I think the flower is lovely. Um, so it, to me, this is interesting as it is, and I like it as it is. I know that some people would have preferred that you did focus stacking and had each piece of the bug uh, in crystal sharpness. And I'm sure that would make an excellent photograph, but that's not what we did. And I think that what you did do is, is lovely because because everything is just sort of a soft focus. I keep getting drawn back right to the, the head of the bug. And, and that's where I spend most of my time. And that's where I think most of the interest in this image is. So thank you, next. Laguna Fog. <laughs> you know, I almost want to say, I do want to say, I'll say it. Uh, I think you have two photos here. I was intrigued really, I mean, I think it's lovely. The, the tree is in this fog and it's just clearing and the, the vineyard is sort of out of the fog and closer to us. And that's really nice. Uh, I think the vineyard is sort of its own picture. I was so intrigued by the the dew drops on the lines throughout the vineyard. Um, so I thought that could could be its own image. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if you crop it down, maybe I'm wrong. 
uh, that it, that can't stand as its own. It's not good enough to stand as its own image. But I was really intrigued by the water drops on, throughout the vineyard. Um, um, the only other suggestion, maybe uh, cloud out that second uh, tree a little bit more. Um, for some psychological reason, in photographs, people like things in odd numbers, uh, ones and threes. Um, twos just don't seem to do it, and I don't know what the psychology behind that is. Um, but that's just the way our brains work. I don't know. Thank you. Next. Twins, great white egret preening. Great shot. And one thing I'll say to you, because I think it might come up a lot more, is you don't need to see all the egret to understand it's an egret. Uh, and I like that you made the decision that what was interesting here, more interesting here, was the reflection of the egret. Um, so I like that. Um, I like seeing the, the reflection is very interesting because of the ripples in the water that distort it and you have to put it together. And so you have to jump back up to the top part of the image and say, well, well what part of the egret am I looking at? Um, I like that the feathers in the egret and the, in the top part are really sharp and really clear. Um, so you, you have this contradiction between the upper part and the lower part. Um, I think it's really, really interesting. Um, and I think that by, by going to monochrome, you made us see these forms, these shapes and the feathers and the shapes of the, the reflection of the feathers, how different they are. So I think it was a really interesting choice to go to black and white for this. And I think your cropping was spot on. Um, I think it was very well done here. Uh, I think I could look at this. I think there's a lot of uh, interest in, in keeping me looking at this image. Thank you, next. Metal muscle. Uh, oh, a tough thing. I, I, you know, we had a discussion in my club recently about how to uh, make an image of a of an engine more appealing. I do like uh, I do like the angle that you've given us here, because very often you don't get to look down the throat and see the filter. Um, so a lot of people assume that the whole throat is a filter, and they don't realize that there's a filter inside there. Um, I think that all this chrome. Uh, I don't know if it, it's doing you a good good deed or not. I like that you you went to black and white to highlight all the chrome work on this engine, uh, but I'm I'm having a little trouble making out some of the parts to the engine and understanding what they are. I can see uh, things at the edges. I can see and recognize, but when we get to the middle of the engine, all I see is reflections, and it may just be you know my bad eyes. I'm, I'm going blind. Um, I think that it's an intriguing angle that you've took, taken this picture at so that we can see uh, all the parts that interest us. Uh, but it's a tough, it's a tough uh, image to take with all that chrome uh, shining back at you. Thank you. Next. After the storm. Really interesting, a lot of really interesting shapes. Uh, I think that if this was in color, we'd probably be distracted and wouldn't see all the interesting forms. Uh, I wonder, um, this, I was intrigued again by the foreground. Uh, so unlike the previous picture, I think that, that maybe you have multiple pictures in this one, uh, or maybe I'm just intrigued by the foreground too much. Uh, there is a little bit of a highlight on the far rock uh, that is a little distracting. It keeps pulling my eye away from it, towards it, away from the rest of the image. As I look around, I keep uh, going to that spot. It's about midway up the image on the right side. Uh, but I love all the, you know, the difference between the forms in the clouds and the forms in the near rock and the forms in the far rock. Uh, I think it's really interesting to look at all the shapes and, and the wear that uh, nature has made on it. Thank you. Next. Winter, Wyoming. Lovely. Um, I really feel a sense of isolation by this. Uh, look at how far off to the side that tree is, showing this big expanse um, of just emptiness and whiteness. And you don't see any evidence of people. So you really feel all alone here. Uh, you really feel the isolation, and, and I felt the coldness. My feet started to get cold when I was looking at this image. Um, 
So I think that you've placed that tree well in the image. Um, I think you've picked a good subject. Uh, I think that Wyoming is big and vast and wide open and you show it as I, I picture it. So, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I think it pictures Wyoming well, but I don't think that it would necessarily work well in a travel picture, but I think it does work well uh, in a monochrome image. Thank you, next. Monochrome masters, 11 images. Rising into the clouds. Really interesting shapes uh, on the on the building and the elevator. Uh, I I would have I would have liked if the elevator had been a little high, but hey, you, what are you going to do? Sit there all day and wait for these guys to get up to the you know to a higher floor? No, you 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 take what you can get. It's very interesting. You have to you have no idea. Um, how high up or low down you are because everything starts in clouds and ends in clouds uh, and, and you're surrounded by clouds. So there's that mystery in this. Uh, I keep looking uh, in the windows to see if I can see anything different, to see if I can see people, to see if I can see shapes. So there is some interest here that will keep you uh, looking around and trying to find, trying to find something that, that you recognize or that stands out or that's different. Thank you. Next. Imagine. Oh, I love this guy's smile. Um, and I would love to see you do a really good portrait of him because I think he's probably a very interesting character. Uh, the only problem I have with it, I think it's a great shot. I think that um, the non-subject part of the image is taking up too much space. I think this gentleman here with the gold chain um, although he's interesting, um, he's not out of focus. He's out of focus. He's not the subject, but he's consuming, uh, you know, at least half of your image, if not more. And I think that if you had used him more as a framing element around your subject, it might it might have been better. Um, it's just something to, to look at. Uh, I know you didn't want to show us all of your subject. You just wanted to show a bit of his face and some of his ink work. Uh, and I think that um, you could have done better to, than, than this. I think that uh, he's a very interesting character and I hope you took a lot of shots of him to try to get some more interesting images. Thank you, next. Dingy doors. Okay, so everything's centered in this, but it works. So people who tell you about the rule of thirds, you can point to this picture and say, see, rule of thirds doesn't mean squat. Um, so you're interested in this, why? Because you're interested in the wear on this, um, the wear on the building. I, um, I don't know if you enhanced the, the wear by putting in a white vignette around it. Um, it. If you did, it looks a little overdone on the vignetting, but I love the wear on this building. I love the wear on the handles and the wear on the wood below the handles. Uh, it really uh, is an interesting old old doors. And I, I think you did well to pick this. Thank you, next. Weathered door. Again, the doors open up right down the center. Uh, I'm not so sure that this one works as well uh, with, with it centered. Um, I'm really interested in these doors. But I wonder what it would look like if um, you only showed half of the left door. Uh, just It's just a thought, just something to think about, because I think all the, the peeling paint on the right door is very interesting. And if we, we only showed part of the left door as if it was a mirror image, then people would have to use their minds and imagine what the rest of the left door looked like. Uh, so it's just a thought. Um, Maybe take a look at that when you have some time. Uh, maybe I'm completely wrong. And this is, you know, the best, but um, just a thought. So next. Holy clams. You know, I had no, I still have no idea what I'm looking at. Um, but it was, it's interesting. I love all the shapes here uh, and in the stone and um, I kept looking, you know, I wanted to look down and to see what I could see down within the, the stone. So it, it did, did 
you know, piqued my interest to look at this and to imagine uh, how deep these hollows are and what's down in them and what created them. Uh, you, you chose a really shallow uh, depth of field. So only the stone, only the dark stones are visible. We immediately fall off, especially to the light stones and then to the background. Um, did we need the background beyond the stones in this, in this case, or is the, the light stones on the top, is that enough uh, to just to have in the, in the image? Um, so that would be my question. Uh, how much of the top do we need? Thank you, next. La Petite Dance. I love this, great shot of the, the two little girls. I love the light on their hair. Um, and it's a, it's a lovely, beautiful shot of them, very interesting. There's something funny on the background, I don't know what it is. And the only thing that I could think would to help the background would be to burn the people down some. Uh, maybe it's just the sunlight reflecting off their hair and their clothes and all that's, that's pulling my eyes away from the two little girls. But, um, and maybe uh, it, it was something uh, in post-processing to do with it, but I would just burn, maybe burning them down would, would not distract them and make them look uh, more realistic than they are because I'm just very much intrigued with these, these two girls dancing. They just look so lovely. Thank you. Next. Descending. Yeah, okay. This one was giving me vertigo, so I'm going to have to talk quickly. Um, really interesting. And uh, I, as I was looking at this the first time, I saw the flat stones on the right. And as it went around, the stones to me uh, looked like they were turning into walls, uh, or into the sides of the, the structure. Uh, so maybe uh, maybe that's just my vertigo coming in, but I wonder if this is this could be looked at as creative. Uh, so consider that uh, aspect of it, because um, I look at this this stairwell, I look at the the handrail, and I just feel like I'm falling down right through this hole, uh, more like Alice in Wonderland than anything else. Uh, I love the first few steps. I love the wall on the right side. But the rest of the stairs um, just seem to fade away into nothingness. So uh, it sort of drives your eye to look at the middle. You look down and it's like going down a hall, but I really would like something at the bottom as a payoff for me to look at. Um, it almost looks like something there. It almost looks like I could make something out. But I really, you know, maybe uh, somebody falling there with their legs broken underneath them or something to make it to reinforce the how they've fallen. But uh, I really want to pay off for, for going down this tunnel. Thank you. Next. A graveyard for ships in winter gales. Great. Um, going to black and white. So, so we see all the uh, forms in the water. We're not not distracted by whites and greens and blues and all of that other stuff. We just see the forms in the water. Um, you know, I normally want, I normally would let, would say, oh, I want to see more detail in the rocks. In this case, I don't want to see more detail on the rocks. I think that what you've done is good because I think detail in the rocks would have drawn attention away from detail in the water. And I think that you've captured some really good detail in the water here. In the for, in, in, you know in the in the foreground here, I think that's really intriguing. That's where I want to spend most of my time. Um, I just uh, and the sky is so so comparatively placid uh, compared to the energy that I feel in the water. Uh, maybe uh, maybe we don't need as much sky because I spend all my time looking at the water. So that might be something to consider. Thank you. Next. Dress stall, Ethiopia. And, and I thought I was in, you know, the twilight zone or something when I looked at this with all these different types of, of uh, doll faces and, you know, look like blow up dolls and, and uh, posters and uh, faces and all. And um, I just was intrigued by all the faces uh, that I almost didn't look at all the dresses. And <laughs> Um, you know, you, you've 
gone to black and white so so that we are focusing on the patterns on these dresses. And they're also very different uh, and interesting. So I think that I think this is a much more intriguing in black and white uh, when we can see just the patterns than this would be in color. Uh, and and uh, don't forget that while you're looking at all these patterns, that there's a bird in the image, and I'm sure it wants some attention too. Um, <coughs> But I think you did well. It, it, it's, these faces are creeping me out a little, but um, I look around and I can at least recognize them as faces. Uh, some of them looks like they're, they're ceramic doll faces. So that's, that's intriguing me. I'm like, well, I'm thinking, you know, what do these people do here that, that you know, they actually put real lifelike faces on their, their mannequins on, on how they show their, their images. So um, there was a lot to keep my interest in looking at this image. Um, maybe clean up the left side a little. There's some fuzziness over here on the left on the lower side to, to clean up. But other than that, well done. Thank you. Next. Homework. Really nice uh, uh, shot of this child doing its homework. Um, <coughs> Really nice lighting. I don't know if this is natural light or if you 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 know set up some things because it's just so well focused on his face and on the the beginning of his hair. Um, there seems to be a little light spot in the top of his head. Maybe you could burn that down a little, um, and maybe even burn down his ear. His ear looks a little because of the light is on the other side. His his ear picks up a little funkiness. Um, and maybe if that was just all black, it wouldn't be, it would not be any distraction from his face because I think the concentration in his face, his face is excellent. I think you've done a good job of lighting his face. Uh, so that was very good. Thank you. And I like the border. I like you border. You showed me where the end of the image is. Uh, the image doesn't go out to the full sides of my monitor. So that was a, a nice added bonus too. Thank you. Next. The shift. Um, great patterns. I kept looking at these patterns and looking at these patterns and I just love, I, I like patterns and, and um, the repetition, the geometry. It's very, it's very abstract. Uh, <clears throat> and if you look at it for a while, um, you can, you know, without blinking your eyes, you can almost see it as flat and you see the lines and then you blink your eyes and you're back to a 3D image. Uh, so I think that there was a lot to keep your eye interested, keep your mind interested in looking at this. Uh, not all the windows are the same. Uh, you have to look at them for a while and realize that, oh, some of the shutters, are, some of the shades are open, some of the shades are partially closed, some they're fully closed. Uh, so you have to, you know, look around. It's not just uh, one window repeating forever and ever. There's a difference in all of them. So there was a lot of interest there. Uh, so well done. Thank you. Next. Okay, that's the end of part one. We'll take a five to 10 minute break. And pictorial basic five images. The traveler. Um, a really nice shot. Unfortunately, he's uh, sort of dead center. Um, I think it, he was moved to one side or another. Uh, he'd be, be more interesting. Uh, I also think this guy is probably pretty interesting. Maybe, maybe just talk to him. Get some, get some better, get some close-up images of him. Because I think he might be a very interesting person. Um, but otherwise, uh, a, nice, a, nice, a nice start. Thank you. Next. It's all about the colors. Yes, it is. And everything's very colorful. Um, I like this still life that you've given us. Uh, everything's really sharp and, and uh, I can look around it and uh, see different things. Uh, I just, that, that, that yellow is a little bright. Uh, maybe if it was toned down a bit, it wouldn't be so distracting because I'm really interested in these red colors, the red flowers uh, at the top and at the lower left are very interesting, but that yellow uh, orange keeps drawing my eye away from them, but uh, uh, well done. Thank you, next. 
heading home. Well, I like how what you've done here. He feels so um, isolated and small uh, against all the big ocean is just this little boat. Uh, so well done. You've given him plenty of room to move across your, your field of vision. Um, do we need... Uh, I, I like the sky. I like the, the background. I wonder if we need all of the uh, water up front. So I'm going to use that four letter word and, you know, just crop out a little bit uh, from the bottom. Uh, I think that, that he'll still look uh, small against the whole ocean, but you'll bring him in a little bit more, make him a little more visible. Thank you. Next. I can hear the bullfrog calling me. <laughs> Great title, um, a lovely image of this bullfrog. I like how his face and his eyes are sharp. Um, the lily pad just next to him is sharp, but everything else falls off. Uh, I could look at him for a long time. I like looking at the lily pads. Um, there are some lights in the upper right corner. I wish were, were not quite so bright, um, but I love looking at his face. Uh, I think he is well captured and he's in a, uh, really a pleasure to look at. Thank you. Next. Perseid meter, Mars and the Milky Way above the Kauia peaks. Wow. Um, I don't know how you did it. I don't know how many images this is. Uh, it's really interesting. Uh, it, it's, um, I know in, in such a real life situation, I don't think the, the foreground would be so bright. Um, but I love the picture of the Milky Way that you've done. I love the, um, the meteor coming through. Uh, I assume the bright spot is, is Mars. Uh, I love the sky. Uh, the ground just seems a little unrealistic given the, given the sky shot. Um, I, and I know how difficult it is to get the Milky Way. Uh, but still, uh, the, the ground is just a little too light for, for the darkness of the night. Thank you. Next. Pictorial and immediate. Six images. Barn lights drive by Sonoma County. This is a tough one to do because even though those are small lights, it's easy to overexpose this and have them really burn out your image. Um, so it's a, a tough thing to do uh, to get it just right. Um, you've done a really good job of it. Uh, I hope you, you can go back and play with it and see if, see if less time uh, makes this more interesting. Uh, I like the, I'm glad that you stopped it before that car coming at us got too close because that really would have ruined your image. Because, uh, and I like the, I'm intrigued, I like the tail light part of the car going away. So that was really, that's a really nice part. Uh, so I think that just play with um, play with how much time it takes you to, to actually get this image because I think you did a good job, um, but maybe uh, it doesn't take so much exposure. Thank you. Next. Help and glow on the mountains above Colby Lake, Kings Canyon National Park, California. Lovely image. I love the colors. I love the colors on the mountain. Um, but for me, the, the, actually the cloud in the reflection looks more interesting than the cloud in real life. Um, and the way you've, you've cut it puts the middle of the reflection puts right in the middle of your image. So maybe move it up. Um, you know how in that swan picture we saw earlier, we didn't have to see the whole swan. Uh, maybe we don't have to see so much of the real image and we can see more of the reflection, or you can see less of the reflection and more of the real image. The only reason I chose to see more of the, in the reflection in this case was that I was more intrigued by the cloud in the reflection uh, than the cloud in the real sky. That's why I chose to, to go that way. Uh, so, so look at that and see what you like about it. I just don't think that, that putting the, the mirror right in the middle of the image is the way to make this a more interesting image. Thank you. Next. Somewhere in Northern California, the road winds through the redwoods. Lovely. And I think that, you know, I think I've seen this in a lot of car ads. Uh, 
it's great. Uh, and I don't know why I've, I've asked my brother why when they do ads and all the uh, TV shows and, and movies, they always water down the road. Um, why it makes the road look better. There must be a psychological reason for it, but nature's done it for you here. I'm actually more intrigued by the left side. I love how the road curves around and then curves out of sight. I'm really intrigued by that more so than the, the right side where it just goes straight out of sight. Um, not to say that, that I would cut the image in half because I think that that, uh, that wouldn't work. I, I think that you need both sides of this. I'm just saying that personally, I'm more intrigued by the left side, but I think if you cut it, in half, I don't think the whole image would be as intriguing. I think you need both sides of it. Uh, so I think that you, you've cropped it well and, and captured it well. Thank you. Next. Cafe Ensemble. Really interesting. It's almost monochrome. Um, I wonder what it would look like if it was completely monochrome, if the uh, patterns in the chairs would pop out more if the patterns in the legs of the chairs against the pattern in the floor would pop out more if this was all monochrome. Uh, if this was a true monochrome, I should say, rather than just a partial monochrome, I think that the um, colors might actually be a little distracting. Uh, but that's, that's a choice and that's just something you can play with and think about uh, and whether or not you like, like it better that way or if you like this, because I'm, I'm intrigued by the patterns in the chairs uh, when I look at this image. Thank you, next. A different point of view. Um, it, it is, it's always intriguing. It's always tough to find a new way uh, to capture the Golden Gate Bridge that somebody hasn't already done. Uh, but I try to tell judges when I, you know, when I train them that uh, just because you've seen this image, this angle before, doesn't mean uh, the, the photographer has and you have to take that into consideration. In any case, um, we don't see too many uh, shots from this angle. Uh, I don't know the last, I don't know that I've ever seen a shot from this angle. So it's, it's really intriguing. Uh, again, I wonder if you have, have two images I'm really intrigued by the boats and the mirror of the top of the uh, tower in the bottom half of the image. I'm, you know, if you just had the boats and the reflection of the tower, I think that would be a really interesting image. That's not to say that this one isn't, I just think that would be another image um, that you could have submitted. Um, uh, and this one, um, Again, so you've moved the, the reflection is just the last like third of your image, so that's good. But I wonder if we need all the sky above the tower in this image. Uh, but I'm really intrigued and maybe I'm intrigued by it because of the waves and the water are distorting the reflection a little bit. But I'm really intrigued by that half of your, your image. Thank you, next. A prayer. Um, a really good C, a really good find. Um, you know, it's pretty, it's pretty obvious what it is. There isn't too much looking around for other symbolism uh, to see. Uh, I, like, I like that you caught it, you captured it. Uh, the, the leaves, I don't know if you added the plants there, if they were there. Uh, this stage of the life of the plants, I think is very interesting because the wood is so old and battered. And I imagine that the, the wire uh, fencing is also old and battered. So the, the leaves, uh, the plants that have been left there are old and battered too. So I think that really adds impact and really adds interest. Um, and, and I think that, that, you know, I could sit here and look at those because uh, those, are, those are the only real colors in it. And, and I'm really intrigued by that. Um, I wonder if, um, desaturating things around it just a little with what that would look like. Uh, but I think this is really intriguing. Thank you. Next. Pictorial advanced, 10 images. Hmm. Falling tide at an Oregon beach. Uh, I love the colors. I love the colors, you know, in the sky and in the water on the beach. 
Um, you've given us the birds, so they give us a sense of size. This is an immense beach. Um, it's really peaceful. You see the tide ebbing out. And I'm, I'm half torn uh, about this, this, I don't want to call it a river, but this water at the bottom here. It reinforces the idea of ebbing and maybe it gives you a, a platform on which to stand, but it's not as colorful as the rest. It's not as interesting as the rest of the image. Um, and it draws us away from the mountains and the, the color of the sky behind the mountains and the color of the sky and the water. So uh, maybe we don't need this little river down here at the bottom, uh, but the rest is all well captured. Thank you, next. An uninvited lunch guest arrives through the fog. <laughs> a lovely picture. Um, <coughs> I even like that the, the guest's wings are, are a little out of focus, a little blurred. It shows you that, that the action that he's coming into attack. Uh, but his head is, or its head, I should say, is really sharp. So um, that was uh, well captured there. Uh, the, the, the gull... Uh, is all still and all in focus. Uh, so, so that was well captured. And the fish, we can tell that that's a fish head down there. Um, I have no idea what they're standing on, uh, but a really good, good capture here. Uh, I love, if you look at the reflection of the gull, it looks like there are multiple reflections and it looks like his mouth is moving. It's like one of those, um, it's like a cartoon if you had all the stills. So I was really intrigued, again, by the reflection of the gull in this image. So I'm glad that you kept that in there, because I think that's really interesting to look at. Thank you. Next. Sentinel. Um, lovely colors. I love the colors in this tree. And uh, I, I, I sort of want to have some point just a picture of the tree, but I also want to do more, use the tree more as a framing element for the sentinel stone. Um, so I want to step in and make the tree bigger, make the stone bigger, um, lose more of the sky so that, you know, I can see the tree just curving around this stone, taking up all the picture. Um, the other thing that would do would be to get rid of the sun because the sun is very bright in this image. And it keeps, it's either, it keeps distracting me, it keeps pulling my eye away, it keeps burning into my eye. And that's not, that's not very interesting. The colors on the stone and the colors in this tree are what's interesting. So I just wish that, um, you know, they, they took up more of the image. Uh, other than that, it's a lovely image. Thank you. Next. Autumn Calm, Spring Lake Park at sunrise. Uh, um, it's lovely. Uh, you've got the reflections, but it's not right in the middle. Uh, I love the colors of the leaves, the flowers. I love the peaceful feeling. You you know, of you all think that you know this is like a camp you went to, or maybe some cousin's parents owned a, a cabin on a lake or rented one for the summer or something. You feel like you've you've been taken back there uh, for the last uh, weekend before fall. Uh, so it's a really peaceful feeling here. I'm glad that you brought the, the pier in. If you took, if you had cropped the pier out or taken it out, I don't think it would be quite as interesting. Um, so I think that that adds a lot of interest. And uh, do we need so much sky? Maybe yes, maybe no. But I think the the pier and the trees and the mountain, and especially the colors in the mountain, are the most interesting part of, part of this. So keep some sky, but maybe not all of it. Thank you, next. After the rain. So this is the sort of picture that I like that you can go look at and you know, see different things each time you look at it. Um, yeah, you, you're always gonna see that flower, those leaves uh, down on the lower left, but you know, as you look around, maybe you'll see uh, you know, an old cat or somebody's face or something else in this image. Uh, I know that, that each time I look at it, I see something different. So that's why I like this sort of thing. It's always something new to see in an image like this. Uh, so I think that was a, a really good capture. Um, 
you know, maybe go more abstract, maybe reach down and take out the leaf and, and just be everything abstract, nothing that you can recognize the first time you look at this image. Uh, so, I, but I, I love this type of image. It's, this is well done. I love the colors that you've captured. Thank you. Next. Hey, Jim at the car show. A really different angle. Um, you know, how many, how many people get this angle? They usually shoot from outside the door into it, um, but you, you've just a little inside the door so that we get a, a better, better picture of the inside. Uh, I really like uh, what you've done here. I really uh, wish though that the, cause the, the car itself is really sharp, is really, really sharp and everything else falls off. Um, maybe, uh, burn down the whole background so that it's it's because there are some bright spots there were some bright cars reds and whites in the background that i think are distracting you away from the i mean everything in this car is so sharp it's you know you've you've got such a great depth of field within the car but i don't want you to distract anything from it so just maybe burn down the background a little thank you next amber waves of grain a tsunami of wheat rises behind a Whitman County barn in the Palouse. Great capture. I really do feel like um, like these are waves that are coming into crash over this barn. I really feel sorry for the little barn. Um, and I think that you've done the right amount of sky and waves and foreground. Um, I think everything is very nice. Uh, maybe, um, you know, maybe to reinforce it, maybe cut out the little, the, Two patches in the in the uh, wheat that that look like uh, divots or something. Uh, I wish I could point them out, but uh, uh, but I think that it really feels like uh, this is about to crash on top of that barn. I, I think you did a great job with that. Thank you. Next. On the edge of the continent. Now you done a really good job here with depth of field because you really feel like you're on the edge of a cliff uh, and with the water in the background yes it's the edge of the continent uh, it's really interesting uh, and everything right here in the foreground from the dead leaves to the to the uh, I don't know what you call the moss growing right there is is really sharp uh, so this was this was well captured um, and a good title to go along with it. Uh, so thank you. Next. Beauty on the inside. Really nice. Uh, you've, you know, got a, a flat white background, so we're not uh, distracted from anything. I think going with a white background was really good because of the light pinks and all and this I think any other color would have uh, the paint the colors in the flower would not have come through as well uh, they would have been drowned out by the background so going through a white background was really interesting here uh, I think you've got a really good depth of field uh, the center of the plant is is really in sharp and you know the, the petals can fall off as they see fit uh, to, to to being out of focus at the tips uh, so well done. I love the colors in this. Um, the, I love the shades of pink. I really am intrigued by them. And when I look at the shades of pink, I can still see the veins in the in everything. So uh, this is very well captured. Thank you. Next. Salt Point's hidden treasure at sunset. Really no lovely sunset colors. Uh, I love the, that you, you took a little bit of exposure and let the water run down and, and gave us that, that soft feel for the, for the waterfall. Um, I think you've got a, a good sky. You've got, uh, and, it, and it blends well from, from the light colors to the dark colors here in the foreground and the what, what is really nice is the waterfall is a lighter color. So our eyes are keep being drawn back to that. And I think, so that's what you want us to look at. So I think you really captured that. And I love the formation around it. Um, I wonder with all of these uh, shapes and all, 
just what this would look like in monochrome. Uh, so I'm not saying that would be a better picture. I just wonder what, you know, if you took a look at seeing what this would look like in monochrome. Uh, so well captured. Thank you. Next. Pictorial masters, seven images. Close quarters. So in my eye, um, you took this in the ugly hour, in one of the ugly hours. Um, but I think that that helps in this image because it flattens it and it makes you feel that all three buildings are right on top of one another and the two blue buildings are sort of crushing this, this concrete, uh, white concrete building. So I think that you took advantage to, to, to make this close quarters feeling more so by, by taking it in the middle of the day when everything looks, looks flatter. And, and I hope that everyone gets that same feeling that, that these two buildings are big buildings are crushing the smaller one. Uh, so it's, a, it's a, an example of how to use you know, the different type of day to, to enforce different feelings. Thank you, next. The power of the gate in infrared in the spirit of Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead. Actually, when I saw it, I, I, I thought of the Twin Towers from Lord of the Rings more than uh, Fountainhead. Um, but I, I really, I like it. I, I love the colors that you, you've, that the infrared has given to it. It really feels um, foreboding to me. Uh, a very massive and intrusive uh, image. Um, and I think that that's, that you've done a, done a great job. I mean, to me, that's, that's what you're trying to say. This is massive and foreboding and, and eternal. Uh, so I, I think that, that you've taken a great picture. Um, in this case, uh, I don't know, I don't know if the cables add or distract. Um, you know, I see it as a standalone structure from what you I'm shooting it at this angle. Um, so I wonder if, if taking out the cables would have reinforced that. Um, just a thought. So maybe something to take a look at, but well done. Thank you. Next. My life matters. Yes, it does. Um, and this is a really good portrait uh, of her. Uh, I, I can, it feels it feels to me sad, and that's just from the position of her mouth and and her eyes. Um, so I, I I think it's well done. Uh, there are only two things that gold earring is really bright, and there's some color right in the bridge of her eyeglasses. And if I think if you could tone those two down, uh, this would be an even more uh, moving and compelling because that gold earring just keeps drawing me away from her face. And I think that it's really interesting to look at her face and feel what she is feeling. Thank you, next. Reading space. You know, I look at these and wonder, you know, in, in how many years when ahead when people will forget all that we went through for COVID and the isolation that we went through, if they will still feel the same about an image like this. Um, the, you know, because I took the space and that's, that's what I said, this person has all this space uh, because of, of COVID, um, that they're being isolated, although they're not wearing a, a mask. Uh, so I, I think it's a really good picture. I think it's a really timely picture. I, I wonder if you um, expanded on the title, if this would be a journalism picture, uh, just just talking about having to isolate uh, because of, or stay at home because of COVID. So well done, thank you. Next. The Swan Valley on the way to the Tetons. It feels like a valley, doesn't it? It feels like you're coming down into a valley. So I think you've, you've reinforced that. Um, I, I am intrigued. I uh, also want you to think about whether what this would look like in black and white. I don't know if the patterns in the grass are as interesting in black and white as they, they appear they might be. Uh, but I'm, I'm, you know, 
although the, the clouds are really beautiful, I keep looking at the grass and the patterns in it uh, and the lines and, and what made that and how this all was done. Um, and what the machines were that cut this up and bailed it and all. So I'm, I'm very intrigued by this picture and I'd look around and you know, there are just different spots to look at, and think about. So it does, does maintain your interest, uh, you know, whether you're interested in the grass or in the, that, the energy in that cloud, because um, it just seems to be blowing up. Thank you, next. A new acquaintance. A really interesting photo, a really nice photo. And I think that because um, you look around it and you'll see different things, you'll see that you know, he's got a patch on him that says service dog, do not pet. And you know that I thought that was amusing. I thought that was pretty funny. And he's the kind of guy who would do it. And then, um, you know, you look at his his tattoos and you wonder what the hell do they mean? And the, his, his beard is very interesting. Uh, and the nose ring. So I think he's probably a very, he looks like a very interesting character, a little, maybe a little different from what you might normally see, but a really interesting guy. Uh, and I think you sort of captured his personality well in this shot. Thank you. Next. Beauty or depth. Great, I like that you put this off center. You didn't put the depth right in the middle. I don't think it would have been as interesting if you had done that. So you put it off center to make it more interesting, more compelling. And we do feel like everything is drawing us down into the middle. The shapes of the petals are drawing us down. Everything is drawing us down. Um, this is you know, just two steps away from being a creative image because all those in the middle just feel like teeth that want to grind me up. Uh, so uh, I think this is, I love the, the you know, black background, so we're not distracted by anything. Uh, we don't have anything here that will be overpowered by the black background. Uh, it reinforces the, the, the power of this uh, plant, I think. And I think that uh, you captured it well. Thank you, next. Travel basic, three images. Approaching storm, Altai Mountains, Mongolia. Um, thank you for telling us. This is, uh, I really do feel like if I went there, uh, this is what I would see. Uh, you know, the traveling nomads of Mongolia with their, their tents. Um, normally I think I'd see more animals, but with the storm, maybe the animals are off being protected somewhere. Uh, I think that um, maybe crop it down a little. I use that C word again. Um, I don't think we need to see too much of the sky above the mountain. Uh, the clouds around that mountain are what is foreboding for us. Um, and this foreground is, is where we are. We feel that it's coming. So I think this would be a really good travel image. Next. Postcards from Padstow. Padstow Harbor first saw boat traffic in 1548, and it's still a working harbor. Padstow, Cornwall, England. Okay, a really good story. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm glad you told me it's in England. I don't, you know, it could have been Canada for all I knew. Um, I know that the boat's not moving, but I still wish there was a little bit more space in front of it. It just uh, makes me a little uneasy that the uh, the front of the boat is so close to the edge of the image, uh, and the boat is is what's more important than the than the cars behind, you know, parked behind it. Those those really don't they're, they're not interesting. They don't add to your story, um, but the boat does. So so maybe if you would just turned the camera just a little bit uh, to move the boat away from the edge, I think I would have made a better image to go with this story. Thank you. Next. Elephants have been an integral part of the Thai culture for centuries. Once ridden by kings into battle and used to drag logs through the jungle, these large creatures are now part of Thai tourism. Yeah, and you have to wonder how, you know, um, you know I, I do agree that if I went to Thailand, I would see this. Uh, and it, it is a, a, you know, it's, it's not something was set up 
just for tourism, you would see this in the water as they're either uh, coming back from, you know, a day of carrying tourists. Uh, I just am a little uh, unnerved by the by the tool in the uh, rider's hand on the on the left side of the image, and it just does not seem to be a petting. It does not seem to be a comfortable tool for the elephant. But uh, what do I know? Um, but other than that, yes, I think this is definitely something you you know a travel agent or a, uh, would would show as oh this is what you can see in Thailand and do, and I think it's a you know a good image that that you captured this uh, of of what it's like. Thank you. Next, travel intermediate four images. When the saints go marching in. Musical performers are found on many street corners in the historic Bourbon Street and Jackson Square areas of New Orleans, considered to be the birthplace of jazz. Oh, lovely title. Uh, a, a good shot of these guys. Um, I just wish I knew the name of their band or if they had a, you know, a band name. I'm sure that if I went to uh, back to New Orleans that I would, would see them or someone just like them. I like that you, you're... you're uh, depth of field is really good, so that they're in focus, and the building is is really out of focus. Um, it does look like maybe that was done after the fact because I see some artifacts around the edges of uh, some of their heads that that just maybe the background wasn't uh, selected as well as as could have been done. But it's a great shot of these guys, and and I really feel that I would would see them if I was there in New Orleans again. Thank you, next. The Golden Gate Bridge can be seen from many places in San Francisco. Here it is photographed from inside the Presidio. Okay, a really good story. Uh, you know, you could see that in a travel agent, you know, people would tell you don't have to go, you know, you don't have to go to Marin or you don't have to go there to see a good picture of the Golden Gate Bridge. And um, as I said before, you know, it's a different angle. How many people take a picture of the Golden Gate Bridge from within the Presidio to show it off. And you're showing off, you know, two tourist attractions uh, in one shot, the bridge and the Presidio. Uh, so I think this was a, a good picture, uh, a good good, good uh, travel story. Um, maybe not so much of the tree on the right next time, but I think this is, uh, I like that you um, went to a different spot to picture, take a picture of the bridge. Thank you, next. Dolores Park, a popular sanctuary west of the Mission District, provides sweeping views of the San Francisco skyline, a fun playground, and plenty of space to escape the city's hustle and bustle. Um, yes, you're, you're telling a really good story. Yep, we can see the, the skyline uh, from out San Francisco from Dolores Park. I wish I could see how um big the, the the playground really was um and it's it's too bad that you you can't do panoramas and travel because that's really what you would want to do uh, to show the park and the the skyline um but given given the limits of the rules um i think you've shown us that you know all the space that you can from uh the the dolores park and that from here you can still see San Francisco. So it's part of the city. And I could see um, maybe in a, in a brochure for moving to San Francisco, this would be a good image. So thank you, next. Escape to the High Sierra, backpacking above 10,000 feet in Kings Canyon National Park, California. Oh yeah. Um, Nice story. Yep, I can see this going in a, a story about uh, backpacking uh, throughout California, throughout the national parks. This would be one of the one of the images they'd use. Uh, it's a lovely shot of Kings Canyon, um, and I think I think you captured it well. And I like the story. Thank you. Next, travel advanced four images. With over 1,900 miles of shoreline and hundreds of coves, Lake Powell, Utah offers a small boat camper ample opportunity 
to greet each dawn of a new day in complete solitude and silence. So I think this image really reinforces your story. First off, there's the, you know, the beautiful pictures of the, of the rocks, They're lovely colors, lovely sun, sunrise, but you're also showing us how small the boat camper feels next to all this and how much solitude and, and being away from everyone they have. So I think that would be a really big seller, you know, if in a, uh, a brochure about, uh, about uh, coming and camping here at, at Lake Powell. So I think you did a, a really good job of writing the story and capturing a, a, an image to support that story. Um, maybe not so much sky, but well done. Thank you. Next. Dungeness Spit, Squim, Washington, extending over five miles into Puget Sound. This spit is the longest in the U.S. and is still growing at the rate of 13 feet a year. The land across the sound is Canada. Wow. Um, so this is something I didn't know. So it's teaching me something, which is always uh, useful in a, in a story and a story uh, subject. Uh, Trying to think of uh, where in travel this would be used. Um, maybe, uh, maybe in echo travel, this would this would be interesting uh, for people to go and, and see how the landscape is changing. Uh, echo tourism, how the landscape is changing over time. Um, it does give us a feel for how long and big this spit is. I didn't realize a spit could actually get that long and not fall apart. So uh, well captured, thank you. Next. The Royal Barge of Fauda'u Pagoda with the mythological hint of bird in the, bulk, in the bow. Four Buddhist, Buddhist idols are placed on the barge and taken throughout the lake in, in the lake during festivals, Myanmar. A great story. Yep, I feel that that I would see that. And I think that by showing the people in the boat on the left, I'm glad you didn't crop them out, you show how big this barge really is uh, and how impressive it is. It's not, you know, some little barge, it's it's humongous. Uh, so I think that was that was a good idea to keep them in. Otherwise, you would see this barge without any perspective of, of how large it is. So so that was well thought out to do that. Thank you, next. The Colosseum, Rome, Italy. Um, you know, it's interesting. Nobody ever shows a fisheye angle of the Colosseum. Uh, so you fail to, and, and so I think this is a really good travel image because I think it really shows you how big the Colosseum is and, and you know, not just the tiers, but you can also see the, the what would have been underneath the stage in those days. Uh, so going with a fisheye for this to capture everything, I think was a good idea because this is an unusual travel shot and I think it works well. Thank you, next. Of all masters, seven images. Rewrapping a turban while looking out over the Moroccan Sahara at sunset. You know, I think that this could actually be a pictorial image. I think it's it's really lovely. Um, would I necessarily see somebody? I think it's a very intimate moment to see someone rewrapping their turban. So I might not uh, might not always see that, but I think that you know National Geographic or some of the other travel magazines would show would actually show something like this because it it com it combines both a pictorial image with a travel image. Uh, so I think you, you got a, a really good shot here. Thank you, next. Mulek Ghat Flower Market in Kolkata, India is a bustling riot of color where over 2000 vendors offer blooms for sale. It is reportedly the largest flower market in Asia. Yeah, so I think you had, you had a choice here. You could either show us that it was the largest in Asia or you could show us all the colors. And I'm glad you went with um, showing us all the colors. Uh, and I think that to me, looking down this, I see that uh, row of yellow 
in the in the top and it just sort of makes it look like that's a path that just leads on and i'm going to follow if i follow it i'm just going to see row after row of, of different types of flowers like i see right here in front of me uh, and i feel that if i went there i would i would feel this i feel the bustle of all these people walking around with their flowers and setting up so i think this is a good capture and it really gives me a good feel of a time and a place Thank you. Next. Budapest Central Market's interior in early morning. It is Budapest's oldest and largest indoor market with three floors in a 10,000 square meter space. And interesting, just opposite of the last, the last one showed us all the bustle and this one shows us the, their market before all the bustle. And, and um, <clears throat> you can just imagine what it's like when when they open the doors and everyone comes in. I love the colors in this. Again, I think this could be a pictorial image. It's lovely. Uh, I get a real feeling for the size of this space. And I just wonder what it's like when it's just full of people and cram packed. Uh, so I think you did a good job taking this. You know, as, as I said, I think it's a, possibly a good pictorial image too. Uh, so I hope you consider that. Thank you, next. A quiet father-son moment along the Salt River, which is in Gila, Gila and Maricopa counties in Arizona. Wow. Um, wow, this really should be a pictorial image. Great shot. Um, they're in a great position. I love the colors. I love the peacefulness. I really feel that if I was on the Salt River, I'm just as likely to stumble upon uh, an image like this. I think the river looks lovely. Uh, I like the reflections of the trees and the river. I like the, that you're able to capture his fishing line all the way in. And, and the two of them sitting there looks, looks great. Um, I think you really captured an important image that, that any travel magazine would love to have. Thank you, next. Morning view of the Redwoods from our bedroom window in West Sonoma County. Home being the best place to travel during COVID sheltering. I love the God rays. You know, they're really interesting. Um, but then I have to deal with all these wires uh, that are between me and nature. Uh, and, and I'm not as intrigued by all the, all the electrical lines. You know, maybe you can tell your, tell your neighbors to, they shouldn't run their electrical lines through your property. Uh, Cause I know you can't, you can't edit them out unfortunately in this, uh, in this category, uh, which would be nice. I'm trying to imagine where I would where I would see this image um, with the uh, you know showing if, if it was just the trees and the lights, maybe. But showing the rooftops, uh, you know, you could you could it would would could be a picture of the forest um, being away out in nature and not not at home. Uh, so I'm not sure where I would see this image. Thank you. Next. Goat herder, Gungalut, Mongolia. Yep. So I feel that if I went to Mongolia again, I, I would see this image. I would feel, feel this. Um, I really like how sharp he and his horse are. I don't care if anything else is sharp. I just like the fact that he and the horse, that, that horse's, uh, that horse's eye is amazing. Uh, you know, I could look at him and the horse all day. I really feel that you captured the feeling for this place. Uh, I, I think it's well done. Thank you. Next. Nick and Six Street Musicians, Washington, D.C., 2019. Great. Um, yes, I feel that, that, you know, these, I'm glad you told me it was in D.C. because I think that I would have seen these street musicians or something like that. Uh, in any uh, in any American or European larger European city, uh, although maybe not electric in some of the Euro some of the European cities, but but here definitely, I'm a little distracted by this guy being out of focus so much, uh, ta taking up so much. I I think that um, maybe if you'd have used a slightly larger depth of field. That wouldn't bother me so much. I don't know why, because normally I don't care if that a son 
person who's not the subject is out of focus. Um, and these two are in focus. I also wish that the that you had moved so that the microphone wasn't wasn't uh, covering that person's face. Uh, that 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 really bothers me more than the person coming in. Thank you. Next. Okay, that does it for the images, and we'll be back in five to ten minutes with the award. <laughs> Awesome. Right. Go for it. Okay. And journalism basic, one image, first place. Laura. All right, Laura. Gorgeous. Beautiful. Beautiful. Nice. Beautiful. Thank you. <clears throat> I love the reflection. Yeah, you know, I went to take a picture of the light and then I didn't see the reflection until I was coming back across the street and I'm dodging cars going up and down the street to get the picture. So it, uh, it was a little bit of a challenge to get the reflection oh, to see the words. You just really hold funny. your hand up like that and they, they all stop. <laughs> <laughs> it's very nice. I'm glad you put this in, Laura. It worked well. Good job. Congratulations. Journalism Intermediate, two images. Second place, Dick. Thank you. Very unique place. I, I can almost smell it. Yeah, it smells. <laughs> Sad, as you might guess. Great color. So this was the dying portion of it? Uh, and on the right, different vats, uh, there's <laughs> dozens and dozens of vats, different colors. They have to strip the hair. They put them in solutions to loosen the, uh, the there's a phrase for this that doesn't come to me, but uh, all these things, there's a lot of, not so many workers actually consider the number of vats. And for the tourists, uh, we were up about three stories, two stories, looking down into the area. You can kind of tell from the perspective. I imagine it's hard to find help doing that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you got a close a close up shot though, Dick. That's because uh, you you were up in the leather shop, right? Being sold well, leather jackets. At this point, I couldn't tell you where I was exactly, except that I was yeah. poised well above it. Yeah, oh, that's right. There is a leather shop there too. Yeah, it doesn't smell quite as bad. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations, first place, Betsy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Congratulations, that's a good shot. Sure got it. Yeah, yeah. nice. Great capture. Sky is awesome. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like the glow coming through the clouds, very ominous. Yeah. Yeah, it looks like fire, doesn't it? Just big. You can see the fire. Yeah, well, it is. Yeah, yeah. it is fire. <laughs> awesome. awesome. Yeah. yeah, I mean, to see that, you know, you, you don't see that during the day. No, shit. Sorry. <laughs> okay, Kevin. Uh, you missed you, Kevin. <laughs> yeah, sorry. maybe not see more of this. More of the fire. Congratulations. Nice, Betsy. Journalism advanced. Two images. Second place, Bill. Yeah. We miss you, Bill. Heard of this. Yeah. Yeah. Water all over. Nice job. He's not here. Oh, very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Congratulations to Bill. Yeah. First place, Jerry. Oh, right. yeah. Great. yeah. Well, great. That's great. That's right. Yeah, thank you. Good yeah, job. that was fun because uh, you know I grew up in Guerneville, and. Uh, I always lived in the West County and liked to fish, but I've never really been out there when they actually opened the mouth. And they say in the old days, you know, like when, you know, in the fifties like that, some guys would actually get out there in shovels. But oh. in this case, it was really cool seeing the big backhoe. And then the surf, there was like, uh, you know, 12 to 15 foot swells coming in and they were crashing on the, uh, on the outside jetty and made them look small. Yeah. 
Yeah. And the, I wanted to mention too that the uh, the workers. There was another on the first shot. There was one worker, but there was another worker. And if I looked at him up close, you can see a little dash of red. Well, they had all safety equipment and uh, and uh, uh, walkie talkies there, uh, so they could watch the waves uh, for safety. Well, you know, you that, did a great that, job telling the story. You know, that, you. That's right. That's right. It's seal watch and, and that sand, it's it's soft and wet. And yeah. you know that when they put that that heavy stuff there, it, it, it doesn't look uh, real safe. I mean, it looks like, you know, something could make it slide in or something. And it's, you know, it's all. Yeah. All Very interesting it's watching a, them. Yeah. It's yeah. Yeah. Keep watching that. Yep. Nice, nice job. I Very saw that on Facebook and I said, that's a winner right there. Yep. Yep, me too. <laughs> Very interesting. Congratulations. Yeah. Journalism Masters, three images, third place. Carrie. Mm -hmm. Well, the Tattoo Festival, I really uh, miss it. We did make it in 2020, but I don't think we'll see it in 21. The, um, the cultural significance that you questioned is just kind of religious icons that you see very commonly, mostly with Latino people. That's it. Yeah. Right, Ter oh, thank you. Terry, did you get a tat? Oh, of course <laughs> I did, but I'm not telling you where. Oh. <laughs> <Okay>. No, I didn't. <laughs> Congratulations. Yeah, Second nice. place. Bill. Oh, thank you. Wow. So, That's really neat. I should immediately thank Tim Allen for mm. introducing me to this festival uh, in Calistoga and also introducing me to the security guard who uh, <laughs> let me sit right on the, the, the railing there. So I had a pretty good shot, pretty, pretty oh, good nice. view of the whole thing going on. That's a Very great cool. What month was that, Bill? Sorry? What month was that? Uh, Cinco de May. Mayo. Right. Oh, May. Uh, oh, yeah. Cinco de Mayo. 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 <laughs> that was May. Uh, yeah, I get it. <laughs> I love the dirt where he's landing on his hand, and it's really great. <laughs> the other thing I'd mention is if you've been to a lot of rodeos, like the Russian River Rodeo, uh, but this is something else completely. Uh, there's no OSHA. <laughs> It's just <laughs> wide open and extremely dangerous what these people are doing, what those guys are doing that are trying to draw the bull away. It's just amazing. And the crowd is right up there right next to the fence and bulls all over the place and they're very angry. Yeah, it's it's quite a spectacle. Bill, I miss it. Bill, is this actually sanctioned? By whom? Because they are close. Well, that's my point. That's my yeah. point exactly. This is Cinco de Mayo and it's not the uh, National Rodeo Association. Yeah. There are no, uh, no OSHA. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's amazing. <laughs> People show up and put, put on the show and they leave the, by the end of the day. Yeah. Uh, I'd highly recommend it to anyone to, to see it. It's so much more exciting than any, any rodeo I've ever seen. Just amazing. I'm like one forward to it. I sort of like this distance, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Congratulations. First place. Tomorrow. Aha. Uh, thank you. Um, I agree with your, your comment that this first picture didn't quite match with the other ones, which I, I didn't think about it before. Um, other than the balloons, it really wasn't as celebratory, so it, that makes sense. I should have left that out, but thank you. It was kind of my, my big uh, excitement getting a crowd during COVID because I pretty much have, don't go out very much or certainly don't go in crowds, but I, we were able to stay pretty separate. And other than the last shot where <coughs> the guy was shooting the champagne, I was actually, he drove right up next to me, stuck the champagne almost in my face, started to pop it. And I jumped back because I didn't want to get it all over myself and my camera. And also other, these people were coming in closer and then just flipped around and as fast as I could shot a few frames of this. Wow. Um, so I was, cool. I was very happy I didn't get all the champagne in my face <laughs> <laughs> and uh, still managed to get awesome. that shot. So it was, uh, yeah. I just thought it Great was so capture. Thank you. That it was, 
if any of you happen to remember a, a journalism series I did um, last summer, this literally is the same street corner that was covered in all the really poignant Black Lives Matter um, paintings and murals and the, the police station that was on all the international news that had right. been taken for months. Mm -hmm. That's literally across the street. Like this guy's champagne that just turned a little bit more towards me, it would hit the police station. Uh -huh. um, but it's really a very interesting change. <laughs> is, is MAPA Make America Better Again? Make America I, Black I again. think so, yeah. <laughs> I can't remember what it said, yeah. I cropped it in a little bit, so I lost some of the, the signs on this one, but it was quite interesting. Very cool. Well, thank you. Well done. Nice. 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 Congratulations. Monochrome basic, two images, second place. Laura. All right, Laura. All right, Laura. Hey. Thank you. Way to go. Nice job. Where is that? Um, down at Ellis Creek. Yeah, we were just there the other day, saw a bunch of those guys. Yeah, there's this, there's lots of bird life down there. It's kind of fun to go down there. Yeah. I wish I'd gotten his head a little more in focus, but that was uh, getting better. It just takes practice. So. <laughs> I like the crop. Great. Yeah, me too. I like the title. <laughs> uh, great for me. <laughs> Congratulations. First place, Fritz. Oh, yeah. This is um, a shot of the Kawea Peaks and Steve mentioned about the different kinds of stones. I could probably go on a half hour talking about the stones, but I won't. But the, the interesting thing is the rock glacier, which is that rubbly thing right coming right at us. Um, it's actually a glacier, but it but it has ice in the middle of it, but it's covered with rocks because there's not as much. Where are the snow peaks? down there? And Where it doesn't move. It moves 18 inches a year. Uh, wow. wow. They tested it. And it's not much, but if, if your house is moving 18 inches a year, that you'd notice it. So that's how the rocks get little. Hmm. Fascinating. Fritz, what, what state is this and where is this? This is in the Cahuilla Basin in California. It's in the Southern Sierra Nevada. Wow. Wow. Between what and what? Well, between, well, um, it's about 20 miles east or west of Mount Whitney. Okay. In, you know, in the High Sierra. Yeah. It's, a, it's at about 12,000 feet where we are now, looking up. Okay. Mm. Yeah, most of us are pretty familiar with Whitney and mm -hmm. Alabama Hills. Well, we're on the other side. We're on the, on the, west, uh, the west side. Got the high country. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. through that pass. Right. It's about it's about a 30 mile hike to get back here. I bet. Oh, wow. Wow. Did you oh. hike it? Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Recently? No, you well, it, this, this photo was taken what uh two, three years ago. Three years ago. Holy now God. we're even more impressed. Yeah. Uber John. Miles. <laughs> I'm not going to ask you to lead the trip. <laughs> well, you know, we got we get packed in a lot of the way, uh, and then we then we go on off trail. Um, that that's sort of the trick. It's it's all about logistics. How you get yeah. how you get your food back there. Yep. But but it's you know it's nice to be able to get back there to see this see this stuff. Yeah. Good for you too. Cool. Wow. Congratulations. Monochrome Intermediate, three images, third place, Dick. Thank you. Yeah. Dick, that's lovely. Yes, yeah, nice. Very yeah. lovely. Yeah, I like the softness of the image. Yeah. Congratulations to Dick. Second place, Pat. Mm -hmm. Oh. Thank you. Um, I agree that I should probably burn in a little bit in the left side. It is, however, typical for um, 
these penguins to lay two eggs. Oh, the no. average. Yes. Wow. So there are two eggs there, in fact. Um, and that's the usual for a nesting Atlantic penguin. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Good. I hope that's on Jeopardy tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who would know? <laughs> That's what I like that I can learn from you. <laughs> Congratulations. First place. Betsy. All right. Good job, Betsy. Oh, beautiful. Nice Very job. nice. Very nice. Very nice. Having the person there. <laughs> Great. Mm hmm. That sense of scale. Yeah. Very nice. I wish he was here. Yeah. 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 He's pretty tired. Today. I'm going to send her an email and let her know. Hey, there you go. Mm, thanks, sir. Congratulations. Yeah. Monochrome advanced. Four images. Honorable mention. Gary. Mm. Yeah, that was kind of fun when I wanted to get the. Uh, trees early in the morning with a deep fog and when it happened that I have a place set up uh, that I knew where I could stop and, and stop safely and so yeah because I really like the little raindrop or the dew drops on all the wires and yeah. the leading lines into it and I wanted one uh, primary tree and the other one I, I felt a secondary tree kind of cold, told a story and there's a third one you can just barely see right where the leading lines lead you into but it's underneath the, uh, it's well yeah. behind everything else. But anyway, it was fun to do. Good for you for getting out on a cold, foggy morning. Yeah. <laughs> Great guys is really interesting. Very, very nice. Very nice. Congratulations. Thank you. Please. Jennifer. Oh, thank you. Uh, yeah, I just felt like this uh, epitomized Wyoming when I was there and I uh, and it you know it was almost monochrome anyway so it wasn't much of a stretch to uh, to be making yeah. monochrome thank you nice nice Looks cool. graphic quality <laughs> nice composition beautiful good composition thank you congratulations second place Linda oh wow. mm. oh Ooh. 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 Yeah, this is in taken in a Port Aransas, uh, Texas, at the uh, Turnbill Birding Center, which, when the hurricane came in, kind of destroyed the whole birding center. But it's now all built back up again, so we can go back there. But it's a beautiful place to go. Yeah. In Texas. Very, very cool. Very cool. Very Good yeah. so. Love the posture of the bird and the graphic <laughs> quality. I love the crop. It's great. Yeah, all of the above. Very I love nice. The stage of the reeds. I love the sharpness of the the original bird, not the reflection. Mm -hmm. Yeah, thank you. Congratulations. First place, Tara. <laughs> oh, all right, Tara. Yeah. Hi. Hi. <laughs> it's a uh, cucumber beetle on a poppy, and it um, it was very orange and taking out the color actually made it much more clear what was happening so okay and I got here really late and I missed the judges comments on this too so I'm gonna have to play back the recording later and hear it but thanks he liked it I don't it. think he thought he it liked it I think yeah the beast is the flower right really great the beast is the flower yes of course <laughs> It does look like it's encroaching. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. Well, image. thanks. Great seeing. Good to see you, Tara. Yeah. I'm glad Congratulations. To Yay. Monica Masters, five images. Honorable mention. Terry. Oh. No. I just love her little foot. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's so sweet. Uh, I think you're right. I could have dodged in the background better. 
That's it. Okay. Sweet. Good job. You're doing silly cat. Congratulations. Honorable mention. Anne. Mm. Oh, well, thank you. I, I probably should have named it Vertigo. <laughs> <laughs> I knew someone was going to say there should be something in that hole. <laughs> Like an owl or something. <laughs> or a mushroom. <laughs> I'm just a an eyeball. <laughs> no, no, no. Oh, an eyeball. An Did eyeball. I eyeball. Oh. An eyeball in and put it into creative. Yes. There you go. Uh, so where was this? Where was it? Yeah. It's at, in Italy at uh, Cinque Terre. Um, one of them has a castle called Castella Doria. Oh, yes. And there is this winding staircase to get up to the top. Oh, so you're looking at the top. I thought you were going down. I am looking down. Okay, gotcha. Hey. Yeah. Uh, I'm at the top looking down. Well, was I'm not there sure a how body far down up. there? Say that again. Was there a body down there? <laughs> <laughs> Several, <laughs> probably. <laughs> There's a castle in Centra, Portugal, that actually goes down to sort of a dungeon. And this kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, it's very old. Very, very yeah, old. Yeah, looks it. Very cool. Do you yeah, really great. on this? Congratulations. Thanks. Third place. Tony. Mm -hmm. Wow. Wow. Right. That's Tony. really nice. Beautiful. Steve yeah. and Laura and I mm -hmm. went down there and spent two or three hours um, this is right from the parking lot looking south uh, at Goat Rock. And I probably shot four or 500 images because oh. of the dynamics taking place. And I, I knew, I didn't know what I wanted to get and I knew it would show me. I like the headdresses. Beautiful. Really like good. Foam coming really off good. the really good shaves. I love the contrast. Yeah, beautiful contrast. I like the sky. I think it adds to the mood. I think. Yeah, me too. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, adds to the mood. I tried the little crop and it, it, it lost something. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, you're right. Nice lines in the sky. Sorry, sorry Stephen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very nice. Congratulations. Second place, Mike. Oh, I knew mm. Michael. Yeah. You've Look. got the best model, Mike. It's <laughs> past his bedtime. Really? Yeah, I don't think he's here. Oh, oh that's right. He's not here. Yeah. One of his grandchildren. They're so yep. cute. They've probably got so many great pictures of. Yeah. Right? Congratulations yeah. to Mike. Yeah. First place, Steve. Oh, mm -hmm. ready. Good job. Nice. That's a cool picture. Yeah. Very nice. <clears throat> um, this was this was taken in San Francisco. Um, it was my only. It's been my only real trip to um, shoot um, architecture. Uh, I had never specifically went on a trip to shoot architecture, and have not really sh shot any previous to this. But I spent two days down there. And I went on a lot of rooftops and I stayed at, at a, I think it was the Hyatt by the, the square. And we were up pretty high. So I was shooting through the, the window up there off of rooftops. And it looks like because of the perspective of this, this, this hasn't been really transformed to, to get a perspective like this. This is out of the camera. So I must have been up high this way. Uh, and if you if you squint your eyes, you, it gets really, really wild on you. You just kind of see lines, diagonal and horizontal uh, vertical lines. Um, and I, you know, I, I just I just thought it had some nice qualities to it. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting it to get first, but <laughs> good job, Steve. But no, we'll see. You'll take it, huh? Yeah, I'll take it. <laughs> I love your cat. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Willie. 
Congratulations. Thank you. Pictorial Basic, three images. Third place, Elizabeth. Love that. All right. Beautiful colors. Yeah. Thank you. Um, uh, it was a floral arrangement that I'd received right before the holidays, and it was just so fabulous. I couldn't resist. So thank you. <laughs> I like Love the tree did you, did you use a filter on that? I did yeah, use that a wrinkling. filter on oh. it. And oh. um, I took notes about the lemon in before the filter, the lemon was really bright. And so, and I'll take another look at it, tone it down first before, and then run the filter over it again. I love the, that filter. It's beautiful. Isn't yeah. that nice? Yeah. Thank you. Good job. Congratulations, Elizabeth. Congratulations. Second place, Fritz. Oh, love that. But this is, um, again, that, that looking at the Kauia Peaks, it's uh, it, basically the same area that the, that the last picture was from, maybe about 10 miles north of it. Um, but we, we set up to take pictures of the, of the Perseid meteors that night. And that, that was the best shot of them. You know, we took like hundreds of pictures. Wow. Who's, who's we? And uh, we got one and had the Milky Way in it too. So it was a good picture. Yeah. Who, who's we? Uh, Pat and me. Oh. His wife, Kevin. Okay. I thought maybe I thought maybe I thought maybe we went with a group to shoot this kind of thing. No, 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 no. It's hard to it's hard to get a group to go back twenty five miles to thirty <laughs> miles on a hike. Yeah, I you guess know? so. <laughs> go figure. <laughs> yeah, you know, I do it in a hot minute. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, well, I was I've thinking more of a guided group. <laughs> No, we've been we've been doing this kind of backpacking for years, so yeah, okay. this, this part of my, I I did it years ago, but uh, I couldn't do it now. Congratulations, first place, Mark. Aww. Aww. All right. Uh, first of all, I want to thank the judge. I learned a lot tonight. Thank you. Um, and you know, a lot of you go to Quarry Hill. There's a lot of subjects there every time I go. So. Just got lucky. Uh, the one story is after I took this, I had my monopod on that little bridge that is right over the fall, you know, on that main trail. And I was taking pictures and it, my uh, one to 400 zoom lens with my cannon broke off and fell down into the creek about eight feet into the rocks and water. Ah, oh, good. Okay. They're tough lenses, just fish I'm out. amazed. The lens survived, and then I put the, uh, the camera didn't work, and I put it in a bag of rice, and it, sure enough, um, dried out, and it's working fine. Wow. Uh, uh, and you got it for a <laughs> My 100, 400 is beat to shit. They do last, don't they? That's amazing. Oh, it's, it's falling off hills, all kinds of stuff. Very Congratulations, sweet. Mark. Good job. Thank you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. nice. Congratulations. Pictorial intermediate three images, third place. Betsy. Mm. Too bad she's not here. She's on a roll tonight. Oh. Yeah, it's a nice image. Congratulations to Betsy. Second place. Sherry. Yeah. Mm. Okay. Very nice. Oh, really cool. Nice, Sherry. Nice, Sherry. Mm. Is Sherry here? I don't think so. I wanted to know where this is. Mount Tam? Uh, Mount Tam? It's a road up Mount Tam no, up on no, South no, Lake. No. Oh. Not? I don't I know. It's a I, there's comes, a hairpin turn like that on Mount Tam. I think it comes out of Casadero and goes to uh, goes to the coast. Oh, really? Because I, I, yeah. I I've been up on Tam and there's a turn that looks just like that. <laughs> I was thinking yeah. I come back from Fort Bragg. I we suspect there's more than one. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> really. There's a lot of trees. <laughs> it's very well, cool. I'll, I'll go out and take the picture and see see which one it is. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Cool. Congratulations to Sherry. First place. Greg. All right. Uh -huh. Greg. Is Greg here? Well, I'm actually surprised. Mm -hmm. um, there was an article in the Press Democrat 
just before Christmas of all the places you could go to in Sonoma County to see some unusual light displays. Yep. And this one in particular is just up the road from where we live. It's, uh, I can remember the address. It's 2020 Reebley Road. Oh, okay. The story behind this one is that the, the owner of this property lost three barns in the Tubbs fire. Oh, and he rebuilt two of the barns. And then the, the barn that wasn't rebuilt is where I took this picture from. They, there's actually a parking lot oh. that, that's there and they invite people to come up. And if you look at the little sign, it says 89.5 FM. All right. You can tune in your radio and they play music in con in synchronicity with the lights. <laughs> it, was, it was quite entertaining and I had an opportunity to stand up and take quite a few of these. And, uh, yeah, I could probably improve this by uh, probably lowering my ISO setting. I was at 320, but I was at six seconds, I was just getting the cars the way I wanted them. So I could probably do something with that, but thanks for the Thanks for the inputs. Appreciate it. Fun image. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Pictorial advanced. Three images. Third place. Bill. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Still not here. Fun. I love the shape of that building, the colors. Yeah. 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 They're wonderful. Green. Great shot. Great shot. Yeah. Job. August. Huh? Too bad about the Winnebago. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Congratulations to Bill. Second place, Linda. Uh -huh. Oh, beautiful. Do you know, this is where I came in. <laughs> this, is, oh. <laughs> this was taken on the light on my light box, is why it's so white, yeah. white in the back. Oh, love that pink tones. Beautiful. Yeah, yeah. The feeling of light. I really like the pink tones too, but it, the light box is really fun. Yeah, thank really you. Crazy. You do it really well. Thank you. Yep, absolutely. Congratulations. Thanks. First place, Steve. Oh, wow. mm. oh Steve, mm. that's that lovely. Steve. Thank you. Nice job. Very good. Good deal. Good deal. Good. All my so 400 here. hours. Of editing on it paid off, huh? <laughs> oh, <beautiful. laughs> Done yeah, it. Uh, Laura was with me on this. I took Laura to see the waterfall and telling her how wonderful the waterfall and it was this piddly little dribble coming down. It's like, well, we'll make use of that anyway. So it paid off. Good. Beautiful. You didn't think about leaving a field trip. Well, oh, yeah, it's a possibility. If anybody is has rock climbing skills to get down here, that's it's a little it's a little sketchy getting down there. Talk Just to Fritz Florida, and Pap. <laughs> What's that? I, I, Talk I, to you, Fritz and Pap. Are, are you talking about ropes and stuff like that, or no, no? It's just oh. you know you just you can't just walk down there. It's a it's okay. a cliff. There's a lot of grabbing and pulling yourself up. I had sore yeah. legs and whatever the next day from climbing yeah, I, using my I, legs I, yeah. to pull myself up. It's gorgeous, though. so it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. Well, I've got two, two first places out of that waterfall so far. <laughs> and working for a third. Yep. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. Pictorial Masters, four images. Honorable mention, Liz. All right. Thanks. Um, I kind of yeah. tweaked this and I skewed it so it would look kind of, you know, squashed. Yeah, it was midday, and what are you gonna do? <laughs> Love it. You did well. Thank you. Yeah. The architecture is fascinating in the middle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. This, this is playing havoc with all my my vision problems. <laughs> so this, is, this is a macular macular degeneration nightmare. I don't know what's the what's the picture and what's my eyesight. You know. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Thank you. Great job. It's, beautiful. it's pretty. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. Third place. Anne. Oh, oh thank you. Um, 
Lovely. This woman was on her way home from work. She was on a bus, actually. And oh. I just saw her and I just loved the expression on her face and just the whole look about her. Oh. So, um, in her scarf, kind of a grab. And then, yeah, the earring, now that you mentioned it, I can't see hardly anything else except it. So <laughs> I think I could uh, tone it down quite a bit. So thank you very much for the judging. I really enjoyed tonight. Thank mm -hmm. you. Is well, it okay to ask a question, Ms. Mark? What's the, what's the protocol? I don't know if you can even answer it simply, but taking pictures of people like that, did you ask permission? Do you take it from afar? Do you sneak it? I mean, I'm starting to get interest in people photography, but I'm not quite, quite sure how to approach it. Well, this, I, I uh, couldn't, I was too far away. And so I just grabbed it and there okay. it is. I, I, I don't think I would have had enough nerve to interrupt her thoughts at that point. So. I, I don't think that, you could publish it. Is oh, that how it works? Okay. I wouldn't I publish it. Place. I don't think you guys are going to okay. steal it or anything. I'm just curious because I have been snapping shots of people and I'm just not. Yeah, it's a good I, I do them at a distance usually. So, yeah, it's a good uh, question. Mark, you know. what I've heard from the uh, when I was photographing for the National Park Service is that generally uh, adults are fair game as long as they're outside. Mm -hmm. um, children, the Park Service really wants releases if you take a picture of children. Mm. And I've heard that um, there are some rules about not shooting on buses on mass transit. Oh, so, really? Yeah. Hmm. yeah. What I are the know. rules? Where do you find those rules? Uh, you have to ask the, uh, if, I'm sure if you asked um, one of the transit companies, they would tell you what the rules are. Uh -huh. um, but generally, <laughs> they, those are considered um, a private space. Okay. Mm. Ask That's Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> Good one, Liz. It's a great place? picture. Beautiful image. Back in place. Mike. Oh. I remember this shot. This is a great shot. He's getting some good people images, too. Mm -hmm. Mark, you should ask Mike about um, shooting people because he does that a lot. Oh, thank you. I'll do that offline. Thanks. Yeah, he, he gave a, a small presentation about two years ago, if I remember right. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's a good resource, Mark. Oh, thank you. Yeah, and I remember Mike saying that what he did was he would approach the people and just ask them if it was okay to photograph them. Mm. Uh, yeah. Congratulations to Mike. And by the way, this guy's name is Terry. I know him. <laughs> Terry, I thought this was one of yours. But uh, I guess it's not. No, I wish yeah. you were. I looked at the tattoo and I went, wait a second. Thank you, Kevin. And when I saw the patch service dog, that nailed it. I knew exactly who it was. Where does he is, live? Is he a Gern villain? Well, I haven't seen him in almost 30 years. Oh, oh. oh my God. But I knew him in San Francisco when I lived there. Wow. wow. I think Michael yeah. thinks he's in Petaluma. Mostly, yeah. huh? If I remember correctly, yeah. it's in Petaluma. First place, Nancy. All right. Oh, oh I, I have been holding on to this picture since Christmas Day of 2016, oh. driving under. No, I wasn't driving. Gary was <laughs> driving through the shooting bang 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 uh and i was in the back seat skylight <laughs> what's that those were those were dark days indeed right <laughs> after the election yes yes okay. yes it was a very dark time and uh i've been working on it since then and it now was ready for prime time and i am very delighted because this one is close to my heart so thank you very yeah, cool. Good job, Nancy. I love this image. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Love what you did with it. I love the tones and everything. Awesome. Yeah. Yay. Very ominous. Yep. And so Nancy. Ominous times. Yep. So Nancy. Totally.
Stone Nancy. Stone Nancy. Good job. It was, it was really interesting to watch Nancy leaning back in the front seat to get position the camera through the open roof, you know, sliding hatch of the car, and she nailed it. <laughs> That's right. That was when we went into the city for Christmas for a few days. Exactly. This was on the way back. I've got a lot of good shots down there that time. Uh, so did I. Did. Cool. Yeah, he did. You'll have to show us, Steve. Yep. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, he's had some winners from there. Thank you. Yes, I've had many winners from that trip. Sure. Is that the Makers Fair? Or no, no, we just went there? to spend Christmas downtown San Francisco. We used to do that before. Okay, no event. No. Yeah. Christmas, yeah. A lot of our shots were around Columbus and Washington by the uh, Transamerica Pyramid, the old one and the new one. Oh, I remember. Yeah. That was my secret spot. <laughs> and then Plymouth, uh, yeah, Plymouth Square. I mean, Portsmouth Square. Anyway. Portsmouth Square, yeah. Yeah. Portsmouth, yeah. Oh, it's beautiful. Travel basic. Three images, third place, Fritz. Mm, another one, Fritz. Great. This is another um, another hiking trip, and uh, there's a hiking trip in Mongolia. Those are our tents. They're not natives. They're, yeah. This was a pack trip, um, yeah. and the storm was on the way. The snow had already fallen, and it was cold, and it was just a chilly day. And on our on our hiking trip in Mongolia. Right, Just cool. another chilly day in Mongolia. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah, it happened to me last. God, yeah, I have remember so it well. <laughs> you do have some adventures. Yeah. Why are the horses on his back? Camels, camels are on there. The camel, the camels carried our uh, packs. Oh, camels right. carry three hundred pounds. About they're worth about two mules. Wow. I'm being facetious. Camels <laughs> do about two packs a day. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Second place, Elizabeth. All right. Um, thank you. Um, Podstow is just a sweet village in Cornwall on the coast, and right now I'm binging Poldark, which is the town that that family comes from. So as soon as I can get a vaccine, I will be back to take some more photos. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. I love the light on this. It's magical in the end of summer because it's so far north. It's just mm -hmm. fabulous. Mm -hmm. Wow. Great light in the boat. Congratulations. First place, oh. Laura. Uh -huh. Wow. wow. Mm -hmm. Yay. Yeah, I was a little concerned about the, the tool on the hand that I knew that was going to be a little touchy point. But uh, yeah, it was it was really cool to see elephants in the river. And um, touchy point. I'm sorry. Touchy point. Yeah, yeah, I, I knew that might, was going to be a touchy point. And I was kind of reluctant to put the picture on, but I thought, well, we'll just give it a shot and see. So, yep. Very nice. It worked out well. Good mm -hmm. job. Congratulations. Lovely. Congratulations. Thank you. Travel, intermediate, three images, third place, Ronnie. All right. Oh, well, thank you. Um, I don't know anything about this band. Um, I can tell, I don't know whether they, you know, that they play together on a regular basis or not, but just about anywhere you go in New Orleans, in that area, you're going to find, you're going to find music and it ranges from, you know, um, instrumental to, you know, people singing their hearts out on the corner, <laughs> you know, on the street corners. Um, they all bring their own 
um, you know, microphones and, um, and amplifiers. And um, we were walking back um, at night and I wasn't even sure whether this was going to come out, but I, I went for it. This is actually in Jackson Square by the cathedral. And um, thank you. Um, and thank you, Tony. Um, you gave me some really good advice. Good job, Ron. Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Second place, Pat. Oh, <laughs> another backpacking trip. <laughs> Our tent. <laughs> that is so, so beautiful. Where were you this time? Oh, in same place. Pardon? Um, yeah, we, we love to go into this area. It's pretty far back. It's not a place you can just go to. You have to plan for a good two to three weeks. We usually go close to three weeks when we go. Uh, that's lovely. Awesome. And it's just, oh. uh, it is a beautiful spa spot. Yeah. Do you have to get permits? Yeah, yeah, okay. but you know, it's not, it hasn't been real competitive. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, Chris would be right out there. Yeah, now that we've seen it, boy. <laughs> Beautiful. Congratulations. Congratulations. First place, Sherry. All right. And she's that, not here. That's cool. I like that. Sherry. Yeah. Yeah. Really nice. Her. I, I like how the cables go right into the roof line there. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Her yeah. antenna. And the Yorkie. All red, white, and green. Congratulations to Sherry. Huh. Travel advanced. Three images. Third place. Guy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Nicely done. Nice job. Never been there. Yeah. It's pretty that amazing. Nova had a fascinating um no. No. fascinating what do you call it movie whatever but they talked about how it was built and how the platform that goes through the center there actually moved and they used to fill that with water for ships <laughs> huh. Huh. Wow. recommend checking that out on nova if you ever have the chance Pretty cool. They actually put on sea battles. Exactly. Really? Really? Oh, yeah. Wow. That's amazing. You could use that as a background picture. Cool. <laughs> wow. Interesting. Awesome. Congratulations to Guy. Yeah. Cool. Second place. Herb. All right. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Nice job. Wow. Good job. Other world. Uh, thank you. Yeah, this was after uh, six or seven days camping on Lake Powell, and you usually don't see uh, clouds in the desert. So we woke up this morning and uh, saw that sky, and I just had to get out before the, the sun came up and get a shot off. So uh, thank you. Beautiful. 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 Is that your boat? Yes, it is. Yeah, we were there for a week. Uh, actually, we left it. We, we moved from New Jersey, so I brought, we trailed the boat over, and it was in Lake Mead, or it was being stored there, because I always wanted to go to Lake Powell, and so we went there then, uh, and that was two years, was it two years ago? Yeah, and we just went back again, because uh, I like it so much, so it's fun. Beautiful. Beautiful. Yeah, you did job with the image. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. First place, Bill. <laughs> oh, wow. No, you can't do that, Bouncy. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. Where yeah. is Bill anyway? Did he get stranded somewhere? I think he just doesn't do Zoom. Uh. Congratulations to Bill. Yeah. Miss you, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Travel Masters, three images. Third place, Tony. That's awesome. Uh, Love this image, Tony. Mm -hmm. 
the hardest thing about this image was trying to keep the sand out of my camera. <laughs> um, I bet. I only got one shot of the guy. He was much faster at uh, putting his turban on than I was taking his picture. <laughs> I love the light sand blowing. Yep. The leading line of the sand up there. Yeah. That makes it yep. beautiful. Yeah, wonderful image. Thank you. Thank you. Gorgeous light. First place mm -hmm. in my nice shot, Tony. Congratulations. Congratulations. Second place, Bill. Oh. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I guess what I like about this picture is how well the horse is groomed. Yeah. Um, uh, 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 nomadic the people live in Gers and uh, every Look at the eyes horses. on it. Been outside the year around, but it's, it's so well. I'll see you know, it's, it's gorgeous. Beautiful. It is detail beautiful. on the horse. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I love the separation from the horse's head and then the goats. I got a lot more shots that didn't have that separation. <laughs> 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 and you can't clone. 200, in fact. <laughs> yeah, good job. Thank you. Beautiful. Congratulations. First place, Terry. Oh, oh beautiful, Terry. That, that is wonderful. It was so peaceful. Oh. So we actually, we had met a guy in um, Tucson at the museum, and he was telling us about the horses they have there. They have wild horses in that area. So we went over there by Phoenix and met up with him, and he took us to this area. And we got some pictures of the horses, but the color was just so beautiful. I think it was October or something. It was just gorgeous. It was awfully nice of that man and his son to be there so perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> so right. thank you. You developed uh, it beautifully. Thank you. Yep. Mm -hmm. Very place. Excellent shot, Terry. Thank you. Congratulations. Yeah. And the best of show. Competition. Yay! All right. <laughs> wow. Uh, Thank you. I'm so glad that you liked it that much because I like it that much. <laughs> Thank you very much. Did you send them a picture, Terry? Uh, you know, they were strangers. I have no okay. way of knowing. I would have yeah. had I known, but yeah. Really nice. Wow. It's a wonderful out. area. If you're yeah, ever you. near Phoenix, definitely yes. check it out. A wonderful yeah. evening. Thank you, Stephen. Yeah, thank, thank you all. all. Thank you, Stephen. Thank you. Thank you, Stephen. Great images tonight. Enjoyed your comments. Yeah, yeah. No, very, yeah. very good thank comments. You. I'm sure we'll have you back. If you'll have us. If you'll have well, us. Sure. Want to be or not. <laughs> no, I enjoyed the images very much tonight. Very Thank constructive. Yeah. Thanks for your commentary. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody. Uh, Good night. Be I, safe. I'll well, get your uh, shot. I'd like to make it. I'd like to, Nancy, what, wait, I'd like something. to tell something. N4, I just noticed N4C winners are out from the last competition, and there'll be some happy people. So, cool. go look. <laughs> All right. I'm happy already. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Uh, good night. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Good night.